All right, so this is the video you've been looking for to convince yourself to buy this drone. In this video, I'm gonna show you why the Mini 4 Pro is such an amazing piece of technology. After you're done watching this video, make sure you go check out my other video, which is the top five worst things about this drone, just so you have a balanced perspective on things. I'll leave a link at the end of this video. But DJI, as usual, just keeps on pumping out better and better drones. And whether you're a beginner picking out your very first drone, or you've been doing this for years and you're looking to upgrade your arsenal, there are a ton of things to love about the Mini 4. To hop right into things, let's start off with number one. And the number one best thing about this drone is the fact that it always remembers to hit the like button on my videos. <laughs> I'm running out of creative ways to have you guys hit the like button. But if you do, I'll put a cute puppy at the end of this video. And the actual number one thing that I like about this drone is that in my opinion, it is the best beginner drone on the market. It's one of the cheapest drones out there that still has amazing quality. And it also has a couple other features that make it perfect for beginners. The DJI Mini 3 was my last pick for the best beginner drone, but this drone is definitely a huge upgrade because it has 360 degree obstacle avoidance, which makes it pretty genuinely hard to crash. I still have managed to do so, but it's really hard. It's also incredibly light, so when you do crash, it's super durable. It just kind of bounces off of things. And even if you're a beginner, you want something that you can get really good footage out of. So I wouldn't recommend getting an older drone with worse video quality, because if you intend to fly your drone a lot, you're eventually gonna get better, and instead of upgrading in the future, just get something that's good from the get-go. And even though it's small, video quality is actually pretty comparable to bigger, pricier drones. Size doesn't always matter. Which brings me straight into my next point, which is the video quality, which in short is amazing. I fly drones professionally and use the Mini 4 footage all the time. So whether you work as a videographer or drone pilot, or you're just trying to get cool shots to show your friends and family, this drone really delivers. This thing shoots up to 4K 100 frames per second, which is actually pretty crazy. And usually when drones shoot slow motion, the video quality suffers a lot, but the 4K 100 looks awesome on this drone. And it now shoots in D-Log M for maximum flexibility in post for color correcting. And if you're someone who doesn't want to spend a ton of time correcting in post at all, also shoots in HDR. Another weird thing I've noticed about DJI drones in the past is they sometimes have this like under sharpened or over sharpened look, but now with this drone, you can manually adjust that on the controller, which is awesome. Some people say you can't use this drone as a professional drone, but some people are definitely wrong. <laughs> As long as you have your settings nailed down and if you put some time into the color correcting, a lot of times it's hard to tell this footage from bigger, more pricey drones. Next up, I wanna talk about something that kinda of goes along with video quality and that's true vertical shooting. So you can press a button and the sensor just rotates. As the world moves to a more social media focused world, a lot of times, even for big client jobs, they ask me to shoot in vertical. And on drones like the Air 3 and the Mavic 3, you can't just rotate the sensor, so you're forced to crop in afterwards, and you lose a ton of resolution because of that. I'd love to see this feature on bigger drones eventually, but for now, this is the only DJI drone that has that. Autel has a drone that can do it, but honestly, I have severe PTSD from trying to film a video with Autel. And in my opinion, the mini line is just way better. Next up, I want to talk more in depth about the 360 degree obstacle avoidance. For one, like I mentioned, it's great for beginners because you can fly in peace knowing that the drone probably has your back if you're about to crash into something. But also for someone like me who's been flying drones for years, it allows me to get much better, more dynamic shots. For example, if I was getting a drone following a car from the front, so I'm the drone's going backwards, car is going forwards to it. Usually in the past, if I was getting a shot like that, I'd have to be looking at my controller, looking at the shot, also looking up at the drone, making sure I'm not hitting any trees or anything. But with this drone, you can just lock in on the controller, really focus on your shot, and not worry about it hitting a tree because you know it has 360 obstacle avoidance. So with this, I can fly backwards or even sideways, lock it in the shot, and not worry about hitting anything. This also means active track is greatly improved. There's a really intuitive user interface for active track where you can just kind of drag your finger wherever you want the drone to go in relation to your subject. So you can get really cool side profile shots and like I said, the front follow shots. 
without worrying about crashing. All right, so the fifth and final reason that you definitely should buy this drone is the fact that it's so tiny and so easy to travel around with. I think it's the best travel drone on the market by far. The size just speaks for itself. This thing can be shoved in the bottom of a bag, stuck in a lens slot in your camera bag, and you can just easily bring it anywhere without causing severe back pain. When I first started flying drones, I was flying the DJI Phantom models, and I literally think you could pack 30 of these things into the one bag that I had for my DJI Phantom. Another drone people argue is the best travel drone is the DJI Air 3, but it's quite a bit bigger coming in at three times the weight and about three times the size. And even though you are getting an extra lens and a little bit better video quality, the video quality improvements aren't enough to justify the added weight. Hey guys, I know there's a ton of videos out there on the interwebs, so I really appreciate you taking the time to watch mine. I don't have a sponsor for today's video, so all I ask is that if you are going to buy this drone, use the link down in the description below. I get a small kickback, which just allows me to make more videos like this. If you're looking for any other way to support the channel as well, I just came out with a new line of FPV merch, so if you fly FPV, I have a bunch of hoodies and t-shirts and stuff with this FPV goggle logo on the front. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely make sure you check out my top five worst things about this drone. Like I said, just so you get a balanced opinion, but I will see you on the next one. Peace.